Welcome back everybody to the Meeple Marathon and a uh, unique video for today. This is more of a public service announcement, uh, kind of a modification that I've added to my game of Star Wars Outer Rim. Um, very early on I realized that these character standees are nice, um, but they're not very thematic, especially when you upgrade your ships. Um, essentially you just, you know, you gain these cards and they just sit in front of you and that's nice too. But I thought, wouldn't it be cool to have some little models of your unique ships flying around? So what I did was go out and purchase a Star Wars Armada pack, um, Rogues and Villains expansion pack. And you can kind of see here at the bottom that it included the Millennium Falcon, uh, the Hawk, uh, Slave One, uh, Hound's Tooth, and the IG-88 ship. The only one, actually it didn't include three, um, but the only one that I was able to track down that it didn't include was the Lancer class or, you know, the Shadow Caster. Now there are two that I don't think Star Wars Armada makes a version of, uh, Dr. Aphra's Archangel and the Valorous. So these two, which are you know, the Valorous is kind of like your in-between ship. Uh, it's one of those that's pretty easy to purchase early on. It's not as iconic. And maybe they will come up with an Archangel here in the future. But for right now, if I end up purchasing one of these, I'll just stick with the character standees. Um, <clears throat> but I did go ahead and purchase my pack. And then I found a single... A person on eBay who was selling, you know, single ships uh, from the Armada line. So I was able to purchase the Shadow Caster model. It came with all the cards and the stand and everything you need. And it was like, you know, five bucks or something on eBay. So um, this is how they come, though. You can see that they're not painted. They're not like X-Wing, which is interesting. And they're much smaller than X-Wing. Um, you know what I should do is... Uh, I'll, I'll show you guys a comparison of why I chose Armada ships versus X-Wing ships. So that's what they look like uh, unpainted. So they still look nice. And honestly, most of what I did was just throw some um, some like nun oil on most of these to, to get them to pop a little bit. But I just wanted to show you guys what they look like. Um, also, here is the base um, that they come in. And you can see that it's clear. So you could very easily see what's underneath you. And I might switch how I've done them for right now, but let's just um, go through them real quick. So here's the, the Shadow Caster card, and here is the model. This is the one model that didn't come in the pack. And these are just really simple paint jobs. Um, I'm not a professional painter by any means, but you can see that the, you know, the Armada models come with these cardboard pieces that go on the bottom and, you know, you rotate them around. I'm not familiar with the game, but um, you know, you're supposed to be able to spin these around like this. And I was worried that these pegs wouldn't fit tightly without the cardboard in the way. Um, there'd be too much gap and these would just wiggle too much. They fit nice and tightly. Now, I may consider taking those out and gluing them down. Um, because you can see, obviously, this cardboard circle here does create somewhat of an obstruction. You can't see through the base as nicely. But you can also see that putting them side by side. The ships do appear small, um, but they're almost scaled correctly to the size of the planets. Um, the character standees are huge, but they're roughly the same size. The character standees probably are a little bit you know, taller, easier to see, but these bases are a little bigger, but there they are side by side. And I'll talk about my decisions for these choices here in a little bit. So here is IG-88 ship. Um, this is probably the simplest one that it already came gray and I just threw some nun oil on there. There's not much to the ship anyways. And this is also probably the smallest one um, that you can see. Not very big on the board, kind of hard to see. So I don't know what else I can do about that. Um, here's the hound's tooth. So this one, you know, is really the only one that I fully painted up. Um, before we got started here and painted it brown so that it matched. Um, so there's the hound's tooth, uh, the moldy crow, or the hawk. Uh, this actually is one of the ones that I feel like turned out the best. Um, 
just a couple stripes of red paint and then Agrax Earthshade uh, instead of Nun Oil to give it that brownish tint. Um, I really like how that one turned out. Here is the Millennium Falcon, which, you know, basically just Nun Oil. I did throw in a couple red highlights in there, but you can hardly see it. But, you know, it just kind of looks old and busted. I did give it the blue uh, afterburners, which are so iconic for that ship. Um, so that, that one turned out nicely. And last but not least is Slave 1. Um, I really kind of went back and forth about whether I should add the weathering effects on this one because Slave 1 obviously uh, has all those weathering effects. Um, but I, you know, when you purchase it, it's not Slave 1 right off the bat. So for right now, I'm just going to leave it kind of as a nice brand new shiny uh, Fire Spray 31 Patrol Craft. So there is um, all of those. And again, I'm, I'm missing two right now in my collection, but that's fine. Let me show you what an X-Wing model would look like in comparison. Let me go grab one. Real quick. Okay, so this is why I ended up going with the Armada models, surely because of their size. This is the X-Wing model for the Millennium Falcon. You can see that it's huge. And this is, you know, not necessarily the, it's not the biggest one, but it's also not the smallest. Um, the Houndstooth is huge and it's, you know, really long and, and sits longer than the Millennium Falcon. But you can just see that if I had this on the board, it would completely just dwarf the board. I wouldn't be able to see what was going on. There are a few of these ships like the Hawk or the Moldy Crow that are about the size of the X-Wing models here, which would be nice. I feel like if I could get an X-Wing, I mean a Millennium Falcon that was this size, um, it would work out really well. Uh, the bases on the X-Wing ships are a little bigger, especially the larger ships like the Millennium Falcon. It's, it's bigger than this. They're big and square, but they are clear as well. So I've definitely liked the circular bases versus the clear bases, but you can see that these, all these ships are considered kind of medium or large size ships in the X-Wing universe. So only like one or two of them was this size right here. Um, I might be able to find an Archangel in the X-Wing. I'm not sure. Um, but that's why I went with the Armada ships and why they kind of look small because the next step up is just too big. Um, I do know that Hot Wheels makes, uh, you know, versions of like the Millennium Falcon and Slave One, uh, but I think that may be it. So if you wanted to go the Hot Wheels route, which they're about this size, uh, A, they wouldn't be on stands, so they just sit directly on the board, but B, I don't think you could get nearly the amount of coverage that I've gotten with this one pack here, and this is still readily available. Armada is still in full production for Fantasy Flight Games. Um, and the last thing I wanted to cover for anybody who, if you're like me and don't, you know, I don't own Armada, I don't own the core set, I don't play Armada. Uh, so I've specifically bought these just to go with my uh, Outer Rim base game here. You can still store these away, uh, at least if you are using the storage solution that I have highlighted in one of my older videos. Um, here in this main part down here is where I have my, um, you know, token storage box. So that's kind of taken up already, but there's nothing in this area up here. I had to cut out this area so that the curved boards, the planet boards will slot in there, but they don't go all the way back. And so you can see that you could easily just line these up, boom, 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 you know, all the way down, fit them in here. There you go, nice and neat. Um, and this sits over top of them like that. Just kind of wiggling around a little bit. Um, one's being caught by this. So. There we go. Might just cut off those extra pieces, but there you go. That fits down in, those are in there. They might, you know, slide back and forth a little bit, but not much. Um, they are protected and you can just simply pull them out whenever you want. And so even with adding these to your game, you can still store everything in the main box. So that's another reason why I appreciated that size. So 
there you go. Um, just wanted to kind of show that off to anybody who enjoys Star Wars Outer Rim, is still playing it, and is wanting to kind of, you know, game up your game, gamify your game, uh, and make it a little bit more uh, fantastical when you upgrade your ship. So, uh, once again, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Uh, we'll see you next time.